Oops. All right, now we're good. Uh, okay, hi, welcome everybody to another Katasa Healing Talk. I am here with some beautiful, beautiful people. First of all, my wife, Kay, Kay Kudal Whitaker. Hi, Kay. Hi. And then Lynn, our friend, student, and practitioner of the Red Door, joins us today. Hi, Lynn. Hi. And then our amazing friends from Portland, Dolores, Laura Kitty, and Laura <laughs> Philpott. Good morning. Hi guys. <laughs> and today we're going to have a Red Door storytelling time. So Laura, Laura, and Lynn are going to share <laughs> mostly. These guys are going to share uh, some of their stories, experiences that they have had using the red door. Um, I feel I should probably read the disclaimer because this is a red door thing. So let me pull this up real quick. Um, here's the Katase and the Katase red door disclaimer. The healing work and teachings that we are that we offer and that you are receiving stem from ancient spiritual healing traditions and are not intended as a medical or psychological service in the allopathic sense of the term. We do not make any medical claims. The ideas, information, procedures, and suggestions we provide are based on those ancient spiritual traditional healing traditions and are not intended as a substitute for consulting with a medical professionals. Okay, I or anyone else working with us shall not be liable or responsible for any loss or damage allegedly arising from anything we provide. Our healing work and teachings are rendered within the context of the ancient traditions they are based on. Everyone receiving healing work or teachings from us is wholly and entirely responsible for their own health and health care. Okay, ready to go. My name is Helmut and have fun, enjoy. Lynn said she's going to get us started. So, yes, um, uh, very happy to be here and um, to share uh, some stories. I've been working with the Red Door, um, Red Door Healing tool and um, the healing arts um, for hmm, maybe three years now. So anyway, I had this really cool experience with my dog. Two, I have two stories about my dog, but the one that I love the most is uh, happened recently. I was um, in bed and he sleeps separate from me on a day bed. And it was really late and I was having trouble sleeping and he was, he started to itch his, his ear and uh, pretty aggressively. And then he would stop and, and uh, I would start to kind of drift off into sleep. And then of course he would start, you know, whacking his ear again. And, and this went on for some time <laughs> before I was like, oh my gosh, okay. And so I, I was just, you know, with my intent, you know, trying to, to calm him down. And then finally I got up and I went to my bowl and um, I put him in the bowl with two rates or yeah. And um, one was for uh, just stop, stop itching in the ears and then clear um, ear mites and fleas and such. And then um, uh, rescue remedy. And so I went back to bed and I was not sure what was gonna happen. And he itched his ear one more time and 
he was done. And then he went to sleep and I went to sleep. And then um, the next morning he was totally fine. And I checked him for fleas the next morning, you know, just flea combed him and not nothing, not, not even fleeter, nothing. And I, I was so shocked. <laughs> I was like, wow. Um, <laughs> So I was, I was really happy about that and happy to have gone back to sleep for sure. And uh, there's um, another story. He was, uh, he was attacked by a dog and I was standing right there and it was like this stealth attack from this little dog up the road who was off leash because um, his owner was moving some stuff from his you know from his house and his door was open so this little dog comes around and all of a sudden there is a dog on top of my dog and um i uh you know removed the dog <laughs> my my dog bam bam is his name was oh he was just a wreck and he wound up with a scratch on his eye, I guess, and um, paralysis on his right side. And I went through a process of like, just going after like the most immediate things first, like shock, um, trauma, um, pain, and uh, slowly he started to kind of come out of his, his trauma fog. And then I did wind up taking him to the vet because I, I saw that he was you know, still suffering. So I got him some, um, some pain meds and they said that he might need to have, he might need to have an X-ray or two. And I was, you know, fingers crossed going, well, maybe we can avoid that. So went home with pain meds and inflammation meds, got him on that. He started to improve, still having some, some um, um, like, you know, inability like to hold himself on his right side. So I slowly, you know, just kind of, again, went through, okay, it's fine, you know, um, um, like in, in nerve impingement stuff and uh, worked through all of that. And, uh, and of course, like muscles and tendons and, and, and continuing with the pain, you know, working on, on diminishing that. And he slowly, he recovered. He recovered completely. And I was so happy. I, I paid probably about $125. And I was anticipating like at least like a thousand dollars in vet bills, you know, or, or more. Um, but uh, and never even went back to the vet. Even wound up with, you know, some uh, additional you know medication left over because he didn't he didn't seem to need it any longer. So I was really really relieved and and happy that he made. Um, pretty complete recovery. So, so right. yes, that's my dog story. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Really happy. Yeah, the pet stuff. I remember switching my cats over to bulls. The, the bulls have easily paid themselves in vet bills. I mean, there's been multiple cats get in the, their cat fights and the, um, the, that's, you know, the cat claw fever or the cat, you know, that they, they'll get those cysts that need to be drained. And the last couple of times that a couple, because <laughs> there's been more than once, but the last few times, um, that has happened, um, with one of my, one of my cats, um, I mean, taking them to the vet, the other thing I've noticed is really traumatizes them. 
like emotionally the it was just like mm-hmm. the drive there I've, i i have one cat that the vet calls crazy gracie and they've asked she's been kicked out of the vet <laughs> clinic she's not they they basically politely said find her a new vet and um <laughs> Exactly. But the, and I do the fleas alone that those rates, uh, Kay, that you've created for the flea management, you know, it's, you kind of have to keep that broadcasting consistently. And it's not that they won't get a flea, but it basically makes it so like the fleas solely and steadily don't want to be on them. But that cyst cleaning, you know, the infection <laughs> that has the septic cyst information for that I used on the cats, um, it, it, it took a few weeks, you know, like it would even if you took them to the vet, but it, it just healed itself up slow and steady and, um, you know, and manage infection that way. I, I didn't do any medications. I, I just did the bowls, uh, for boo the two times that happened and both times it worked great. I mean, over and over again, my, my, my cats, um, haven't seen vets and I know I have really things are horrible, but when you're kicked out of the vet office, you got to come up with other reasons, other resources, but it's, it's truly, I haven't need to. I mean, I did after the first time, the money I say not going to the vet, you know, and um, it just, as I see stuff, you know, I put stuff in there even <laughs> to help with, I mean, I haven't been able to prevent hairballs yet. I would love to prevent the 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 cleanup of that mess, but <laughs> but it, I can tell when they're coming and they're not feeling good. It, you know, it's hair. You know, it's spring, and so those kind of things are happening. But that the decon decongestion of the colon, those programs that um, that you've created has helped. You know, with that too and so that they're they're not as moody and up and running you she has a she, she has a zoo at her house <laughs> <laughs> I, do. I do the red door continues to enhance and and fill our lives with so many blessings i'm going to start with a pet story because well did how many did you have something i'm sorry. Oh, sorry yeah i wanted to follow up with lynn when you mentioned a rescue remedy yeah. Uh, meaning you didn't give him rescue remedy. You put the rate for it in, in the book. Yeah. The pet, wanted... the pet rescue remedy. Yeah. yeah. Great stories. Happy yeah. bam bam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I definitely have a pet story. Um, or two. Oh yeah, I got a lot of pet stories, but this particular one, uh, one of my older dogs who's now gone had learned her little senileness uh, gone into my other dog and, and left her with a two and a half inch gash that was just hanging open and, and on the bottom side of her arm with just puncture holes. It was all black and blue. And we did bring it to the vet and had it sewed up, but I stuck her in the bowl the red door, I put in uh, um, programs for shock and for wound and cell debris stuff. And, and it didn't get infected at all. It healed really good. In fact, the very next day, I looked underneath her arm and all the bruising was gone. I'm like, wow, I got some combination right. It was, like, <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was amazing. And it just, it you, was, Laura had sent me pictures. It was amazing for bruising to be gone that quickly. Yeah, I mean, it was just like, whoa, it was gone. I was like, can you believe this? Yes, it's the red door. <laughs> but here's the, <laughs> here's the big thing. Well, besides the healing part, I had stuck her in the bowl with the sh- for the shock. And I had yeah, some coherent stuff in there, too, as well. And she's not in a bowl anymore. But like, it totally changed her personality. Before, like, when we had the fires and we had to evacuate, it was an act of God to get her inside the car. Now she wants to go everywhere. So the red door just totally took away any kind of anxiety towards vehicles and stuff like that. It's just, she's a completely different dog than she was then. <laughs> and it was just being in the red door. 
<laughs> I can't figure out how it can work that fast, but it does for some things. Yeah. Yeah. I use it on my goats too. The, um, they, goats get a lot of, par- I mean, animals in general get a lot of parasites, but it, the parasites, you know, cause they're rumens, they have to, they regurgitate, you know, and so there's things called goat bloat. You know, if they eat also too much grass, you know, they, they bloat very easy. And, and so the, you're supposed to give them this anti-parasitic dousing, like often, like every few weeks, <laughs> no one told me that. Well, they did, but after, you know, my goats had bloat, um, they're like, oh no, you're supposed to drench them with the parasitic stuff regularly. Uh, and I tried it, that sucked. Um, and so instead (laughs) you try to jump that down a goat who can kick, I I mean, it was, and so instead, uh, Kay's programs, um, for the, the red door bowls that are in a a parasitic, but there's also an anti-bloating as part of digestion. And I have those in the bowls for the goats, along with a lot of other really good minerals and probiotics and other stuff. And they, they rarely get bloated, but they definitely, in fact, I had a lady who teaches how to look at the eyes to see if they have parasites and, and come by and she's like, no, your goats are doing great. And so the, it just keeping that I, again, my cats and my goats have bulls. I mean, it's it, it again, and some people probably roll their eyes, but they've paid for themselves. I mean, it's just like if we, the vet bills aren't cheap, you know, and again, in the trauma, I mean, the, there was the, the vet has this pickup truck and there was one period of time I, I had called the vet to fix the goats and they've been really traumatized from that moment. <laughs> and so it, when they there was a, I think it's been long enough now, but another person came with that pickup truck and the goats like hid. <laughs> and so it's the, um, I love that because it, I mean, the other thing I love about using the bulls on pets and little kids too, they can't communicate what's going on or at least they are. And I'm not always able to understand them. They're, they're broadcasting and I'm sure specifically. And, um, But the bowl allow, I mean, that's that two-way communication where it's no time and space and you can put, um, I could put Eddie in and, you know, and see what's bothering him. You know, a lot of times it's just emotional stuff that I can also throw in. (laughs) My goats are dramatic. (laughs) They need a lot of love. (laughs) But I do do that along with the bowl, yes. (laughs) But I love that. I love that, the, you know, instead of spinning, you know, going, do I take him to the vet? Don't I take him to the vet? You know, I, again, I, over and over again, I'll talk about these practices and whether it's the studies or the bulls are about putting the control back into your life in your hands. And that's the gift of so much of this is the, um, the more and more you study it, the more and more you use it. I, I mean, our first knee jerk, anything happens is not grab our purse and head off to a doctor or vet or urgency care. It's what do, what does, what do we need to put in our bowl? I mean, I just. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So thanks Kay. I appreciate it. You've saved my family a fortune. <laughs> Ours too. <laughs> yeah. Laura has another really good story. I do. So can she share it? Okay? <clears throat> oh, absolutely. And I hope for, <laughs> I'm dying for her to share this story. If you're yeah. ready. So, I got my Kleenex. <laughs> so... Put it that way. We just start working with oh. the red door three years ago. Or is it four now? Is three? Are you talking about Keeper and you? Mm-hmm. That would be 19, 2019, I think. So almost three. So, you know, my son's been <laughs> what, what, we, <laughs> what we call baking in the, in the red door 
for a number of years now. And when we initially put him in the bowl, we saw some amazing changes. It's just like, Give the backstory in case no one's heard your story with Kiefer. Oh, yes. Um, he's on the autism spectrum. Uh, he, he and I were in a, actually an automobile accident in 2016. And the trauma from that accident and the trauma from going to school, he became very angry and would, was every other word out of his mouth was cussing. And um, he'd kick, kick at people and hit at people. And he was not a happy young man. And so that's, then we find the red door. And overnight, we put him in the red door and all that changed, all that went away. There wasn't that aggression. He was just happy. And he has been happy since. But he had not gained back his language and expressive stuff. So like, I'm gonna give an example. Keeper, uh, do you know what you'd like for breakfast? Okay, would you like this or this? And, and sometimes he could tell me which one. Sometimes it was like a total mumble and I, and I never really got any kind of little conversation here and there. But before his, his accident and stuff, he was highly verbal and was able to express himself. And then it went to where he was basically ice, um, closed down and, and unable to express himself. Mm -hmm. And now he's always had expressive and um, receptive language challenges, but he was able to express himself given a chance. Uh, so this accident happened and he kind of really shut down. The red door comes and he's happy, but still not really communicative. So we've put, I'm, I'm working on stuff from, uh, Bartonella. I have um, some programs in for that. I have programs for um, he um, cell health and mitochondria. I mean, I got a whole bunch of stuff to this brewing in the bowl and I know it's making a difference. When we add in the coherence rates and we have a bowl specifically for coherence now and like something's brewing <laughs> and we would sit down uh, in the mornings and go over one of the particular coherence rates and it was the one about healing and so we would see our kiddos in in the light of health and wellness and and we would read it every day and I said you know what we don't need to read this anymore it's, it's happened I can feel it's happening it's it's already in his future kind of and so we, we he's still in the bowl for those coherence rates but we no longer read it because we feel it so, um, so yesterday morning, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I usually it. bring, I usually bring my youngest son to school. He only has a couple classes left. So I bring him into the high school and, um, up until yesterday, it might take all day to get my, uh, my oldest to get into the shower, keep her to get into the shower. And for whatever reason, he got up, he was he took a shower. He got himself dressed. He usually runs around in his underwear. He sensory issues, doesn't really like to put clothes on very much, but he all dressed, shoes on, and he wanted to go get new shoes. He, so he says, I'd like to go with you to get new shoes. I said, okay, we're dropping a Griffin off. Okay. I, first of all, that's I mean, a full sentence. That's expressing himself. I know. That just that, like that would have been celebration, the, a full sentence with him in the morning would have been a huge celebration. It keeps coming, people. <laughs> it's a good, it's a long story, but it's a good one. I know it's, it's a it's... long story. I'm so sorry about that. But so he's all ready to go. He, I mean, I didn't turn around and his clothes is all off because that's happened. <laughs> <laughs> We're all ready to go. And he's still in his clothes and he gets in the car. Uh, <laughs> Just, okay, he's like, two, two he, wins he's already. Happy. He's happy. He's focused. He's not, yeah, I mean, so we drop my son off and we go into the store and he doesn't run off. He stays right with me yeah, before. Win three. Like, <laughs> yeah, win three. <laughs> and and he, he went right to the, the shoe section. And I said, maybe we should look for a shoe that, that, that doesn't have to have tying. And he goes, I can learn how to tie my shoes. Full sentence. I can learn how to tie my shoes. <laughs> That's huge. Yes. I don't know if anybody. It, it is huge. <laughs> I know. Just and, and, and a willingness to learn and relearn 
and and have the confidence that he can learn something like tying a shoe at, at, after all these years. When's the last time you taught him how to tie a shoe? Oh, it's been a while because he has not had any interest at all. So it's been a number of years. I, I keep coming back to it. But like six years? Yeah, probably about six years. I could learn to do it. <laughs> anyway, keep so... Going. So it keeps going. Okay, well, okay, let's look for some shoes that you might like. And so he picked out a particular shoe and you, my son doesn't really want to spend much time in a particular spot or like, like his, his attention span for a, an activity, especially one that's not his choosing is very, very short, but all right, okay, this is his choosing. But nonetheless, we went through like eight pairs of shoes. He actually put them on. He walked a little ways away and came back and, and described how it was feeling on his foot. I mean, this is huge. Didn't I mean, he let like, somebody measure him too? Yeah, a yes. total stranger near his personal space measure his foot. Anybody with autistic kids or you just know that the sensitivity to all of this stuff is highly triggered. Yeah. Yeah. So he, uh, so he picked up two picked out two pairs of shoes we had gone through eight, trying on eight different pairs of shoes and then we got his shoes okay well I'll have this lady bring the shoes up to the register I was like and then he goes and I want to go get some underwear so he's expressing himself again so we go to the underwear section um it just keeps coming people <laughs> and he, picks wow. up, he picks up the underwear I and says I want I want some socks and um, so he goes and he picks out the socks that he wants. And then he goes, now I want some pants. And he goes, he says specifically blue jeans. So we went over to that. that well, and what Laura's telling me this story and he, he, he I, 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 I know Kiefer and most of the time he doesn't want to wear clothes, period. The fact that he's, he's intentionally, I mean, not only this, I mean, there's so many layers of amazingness in this like, this healing i i saw a glimpse of my son healed and i and not i mean in a an amazing way it's like i know the red door is doing it and i may have just saw a tiny crack of you know what other people think is like <laughs> they're just so used to other people responding and, and and interacting that way this is huge and it, and it just kept going. <laughs> and we've seen little glimpses of it, but it's like all of a sudden the, the gates open and- uh, He's back. He's, yeah, he was, he was all there. It's, and it's the red door. She's pointing at my red door. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's the red door. <laughs> I know it is. It's, I'll hurry my story up. He he ended up trying on a pair. Of, he waited for the lady to come and he tried on a pair of pants and he wanted those. And he goes, now I want a dress shirt. <laughs> and he and we we found the dress shirt section. He picked out a shirt and you know, I want a tie. And he picked out two ties. And then he goes, now I'm ready to go. <laughs> We, wow. we can't, I can't wait to see him dressed up. <laughs> no, I am going to take a picture of him a if picture he's okay with that. Up. If he's okay with me posting it in our healing group. But yeah, oh my gosh, it was. What's his name, Laura? Um, Keeper. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. How old is he? He's 20. Wow. Yeah, the fact is, is that he lost all that communication um, for such a long period of time. Most of the time he would turn and walk away from me and mumble something and I could never really quite hear. And, and it was like, he's, like his tongue and everything was all tied up and he oh, couldn't express himself. And uh, he had like a vocal tick that he had started afterwards, like, uh, he had never had that. And I haven't, you know, this, I, I know it's just the combination. We've got the right combination going on and the coherence rates. It's just like, it's setting the stage. <laughs> well, and you said the gratitude too. Oh, yeah. Hey, I, I, I tell you, 
bowls were amazing. And then you created the coherence and that was a game changer. But this, just when you don't think it could get better, you added the gratitude <laughs> stuff to them. And it's, I mean, now I'm losing and that's, it. And that's <laughs> actually, that's the one we have in the downstairs bowl that we, we sit at. It's the gratitude one. And well, I, oh, I don't even say you people is this is wow stuff to me. This is miracle stuff. And I'm so glad I could talk about it today because yesterday I was <laughs> falling with just so much joy and happiness. Oh, and, yeah, that's a beautiful story. It's, it just, this week there was something, Kay, I tell you, I, maybe it was because they knew we were going to talk about it, but I had a eye appointment um and um i was prescribed um uh, that i had double vision one nearsighted eye and one farsighted eye that i you know a few years back and i kind of started out with the glasses and um the eye doctor that i prescribed that i asked about therapy and there's like there's no therapy for it you know not as an adult it's not possible and I remember telling you that, Kay, and you're like, you don't believe that, do you? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> and so I've set up a bowl um, on my eyes and kind of checked the glasses. Like what I read, it was like, I gotta, I've got to figure out how to make these muscles work together again. And, it, you know, and done my own research and, um, but had... During the eye appointment, there's a lot of eye health, like aging of the eye. And I had LASIK surgery that was failing in one eye. And um, anyways, I I've, I've have one bowl dedicated to my eyes and my eye health. It's way too important. You know, it's like you, you know, I've got the general bowl and the, the coherence bowl and I have an eye bowl that my eye gets and eyes, both eyes. And, um, and I had floaters and, and other things. And I, you know, in addition to the bowl, um, I've been doing the gratitude ceremony for my eyes, you know, in the statement, change the statement of healing um, into the, thank you for healing the trauma to my eyes, that kind of the statement. But before I did a gratitude ceremony before I left for the doctor, and asking, I did not know who my doc, new doctor was going to be. I changed clinics because I said, that's bullshit. You know, I would, you know, try again. And I, I, I set the intention that, you know, find me a doctor who is going to work with the energies that I set forth with the healing of the bowls and this gratitude, you know, that doesn't send me off course, you know, so that I have to bring myself course. Anyway, I get, they, this doctor walked in and quoted you, Kay. He's like, he, 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 in fact, his whole energy was like, I was telling him about a little bit about my last ex experience. And before I could say, I didn't believe that it was not correctable. He said to me, he goes, you don't believe that, do you? He, he didn't say that's not true. He said, you do not believe that to you. And I'm like, I'm in the right place. And it just from there on went amazing. My eyes are healthier. They brought up screen to screen. There's no floaters. He's like, and he was a little, my eyes are younger. The health in my eyes are younger than I am at nearly 51. He's like, the health is great. He's surprised that my LASIK eye surgery hasn't, you know, failed more <laughs> because of he's like, they're not supposed to last uh, 20 plus years. Um, but the, he's he, my he would not prescribe me glasses. He's just like, no, he goes, I don't want you wearing the lenses and I'm going to send you off to therapy. But he's like, I, he goes already what you're doing, whatever you're doing, keep doing it because your eyes have less double vision and they're, the prescription's lower and the health is better. He's just like, keep doing what you're doing. And I'm like, <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. I mean, it's just like the, you know, it's. I love being the other place in the place where we can say, you don't believe that, do you? 
you know, and, and, and so you're okay. I'm losing it now. I like, <laughs> I'm happy to have keeper back, but I'm happy to have my, my eyesight, you know, it's like, not that I ever believed that, but I now believe that my eyes can actually be healthier than, you know, I, you know, I, I fully, and I know your story too, about the woman you helped with her eye health. And, and so, you know, it does help to have some of those other experience being shared, but being able to, um, get my eyesight back. It's, it, you know, I just, I firmly, absolutely believed it was happening, but having the linear confirmation that it was happening was everything this week. Everything, everything. Yeah, nice week. It was week. quite the week. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We're doing magic. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing magic. <laughs> We're doing magic over here. <laughs> We're doing what anybody and everybody can be doing. And that's the fun part. Because mm -hmm. we're not special or unique. We're just doing it. You don't have to be some kind of genius or super psychic healer person thing. No, you don't have to have anything like that. Just everybody, everybody can can use the bowl. And um, you had told a story. Um, one of the students, is this Deanna with the child, with the girl? Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, she's on. She's listening. <laughs> the little girl is five or six. And uh, just sort of a typical five or six year old, cute little girl. And she's, she really has an amazing understanding of the bowl for somebody her age and a feeling, a feeling for it and an understanding about, um, you know, putting things in and out of the bowl. And, uh, mm. Yeah, I, if you don't have to have some sort of special thing going. Kids, even pretty little kids apparently can, can learn. Uh, a lot of things about how to use the, the, the bowl. And, you know, I think uh, I started to create that bowl almost 30 years ago and have used it profusely ever since. <laughs> many bowls, many clients, us. <laughs> and I, I, can't help but to have the feeling that I'm still just scratching the surface of what it's capable of. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> and, Lynn, when did you, oh, I'm sorry, Kay. Well, it, things keep coming to me and I, you know, I feel like the, my spirit helpers definitely um, throw me a bone now and then. Give me a hint with something to try, something to do, a, a new angle to take. And I, I just see it uh, growing and growing and growing. It's, um, I devised it because of uh, my studies with the ancient teachings, the pre-dynastic Egyptian and the ancient Peruvian. And their ceremonial things and their altars, the way they build their altars, the use of, of circles uh, and geometry and their insistence on sacred geometry. And there's geometry everywhere because it's, this is 3D time space. Everything, there's geometry everywhere of all sorts. And it's all interacting and it all creates energies and they flow this way and that way. And they create different energy fields and currents and, uh, and they're, they're all over the place in our artificial structures, in our furnitures, outside in nature. It's just everything. And putting those little pieces together through 
uh, the years of, of studying those things and then coming across modern electronic radionics, uh, I started experimenting with that and the, and the shape and got to um, hone it down to a shape that seemed to be the most effective and the most powerful. But I didn't really originate it. I, I reinvented it because it was, it was very ancient. These same shapes, these same bowls with a very mysterious uh, usage. It, it's found in um, uh, the Mississippi culture ruins in uh, Georgia and Mississippi. And that's anywhere from, you know, one to 5,000 uh, BC, maybe more, maybe a lot more. These people are said, uh, you know, by local legend to have come from Atlantis and they brought their, their knowledge with them when they came. And uh, I'm sure that this bull was part of that. And then I heard another rumor of um, a scientist from NASA who knew about the shape and knew what it could do with being able to broadcast information and probably do lots of other things. So uh, the secret people, it's NASA. <laughs> And those other kind of places where it's all really secret. They know, <laughs> they know about the shape. <laughs> <laughs> and they probably um, caught on when, you know, they do their own study of ancient things and ancient artifacts and um, have ways of, of getting information about ancient knowledge knowledge from the star people and that kind of stuff. So, you know, this, this is, uh, this kind of knowledge has been around and it just keeps popping back up in, in, into our world, popping up in the surface again. So my hope is that it, it doesn't die off this time. It doesn't somehow get lost and we just keep, learning more and more about what it is and why it is and what it can do and keep exploring with it. Mm. Well, maybe our uh, Deanna's daughter, <laughs> maybe our, our, our little Laurel will take it on <laughs> and keep going with it. Well, there's a picture of her I think she's sitting on a bed, the bowl's in her lap, and she's got a pendulum in her hand. And the, using a pendulum is how we douse for uh, yeses and noes. And that's how we get our information is, is, is that kind of dousing. Dousing is also very, very, very ancient. It comes from most, most cultures have a form of dousing. Uh, and there she is. <laughs> she's very concentrated. <laughs> So he's doing it already. Yeah, see, you know, it would be nice to um, normalize this, right? To make it like just a part Game of every, yeah. every day, you know, it's like teach your kids to, to do this as, you know, a part of their own self-care and, you know, taking care of whatever animals and. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm still a proponent that every, every home needs one and better yet, every body needs one. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're just still kind of in that toxic uh, landscape <laughs> that, you know, all the detoxing, it just does. I mean, I, I got exposed to my neighbor's spring and I could feel my skin trying to, um, break out again and so I just doused for what was going on and put the um program in the the combination of program in it is to clear up my skin again and again and again and unfortunately until they change their habits 
you know, it's, it's not a, it's not something I can avoid a hundred percent, you know, avoiding is always best, but it's out there. We're breathing it in, trying not to, but the, the, the clear and eliminate and detox programs alone, you know, is there worth, they're worth way more than their weight in gold. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I end up using those uh, all the time for all kinds of different things. And even when somebody seems to be sick with, with a germ mm-hmm. uh, of some kind um, or an infection, and there's maybe there's pus and stuff, uh, getting a sample of their blood, their saliva, their sweat, the pus, any of that, and putting it in the bowl. Hopefully you seal it up in something. <laughs> I'm already like we use these little glass <laughs> vials, but maybe a little baggy or you know, something like that. Um, so it just doesn't contaminate anything else. You want it to, to be singled out. And um, and doing the antidoting. It's a great idea. Because all these germs. Um, they're creating different poisons and certain bacteria and certain fungus are very famous for s- some really nasty poisons that they excrete and they can excrete it into the food. They can excrete it into your body and the damage, the actual bug or- organism, the microbe is not that bad. It's not like they're going through and chewing at cells at lightning speed, <laughs> But the poison they excrete can be extremely problematic. And that's what most people feel when they have some kind of a germ or an infection of some kind. They're, they're feeling poison that, that has been excreted. And sometimes uh, our own bodies, uh, we're ex- excreting, our cells are excreting things all the time just for, out of metabolism, stuff that it can't reuse. And it needs to get flushed out one way or another. It needs to get out of the body. And when that's too slow, it's not happening. It's clogged up. Your lymph system's clogged up. And a number of other things that could be slowing that down in your body. We get sicker. It makes things a lot worse. So we need to keep those systems open and, and cleaned. And so using these, these anodoting rates, uh, it's just magic. Yeah. There's a, you did that. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Kate. There's um, a, another technique that uh, I've been toying with for years, but I'm getting better <laughs> at it. Uh, and that is to desensitize our body from um, going crazy when a certain substance um, touches our skin or we breathe it in or it gets in the eyes or we ate it, uh, somehow got into our body and we have these big reactions like like pollen allergies. Uh, We can become very uh, allergic, very intolerant of some of these poisons that are excreted or the poisons that we can't get out of our body that our own body made. Uh, so if you can get samples of, the, of them and use the antidoting and clearing away, reversing uh, any sensitivities that you might have to whatever these substances are, that that's another big step because if we can actually educate the body to not be sensitive anymore to it, to go, you know, crazy reactions to it. Um, That's, that is a huge step. That's in our, our modern times, we, our bodies have learned how to become intolerant of thousands and thousands and thousands of different substances including things that are made by nature, not just man-made stuff. And then the, from one method or another, the body can learn how to be intolerant of a particular 
food that's normally very, very healthy and has things our body really needs. But if you get intolerant and truly allergic to it, your body thinks it's the devil and will attack it and, and, and make you pretty sick. Uh, even to the point of anaphylactic shock. So to reverse those reactions that, so they, your body doesn't believe anymore that it, it's a problem. That's, that's another new key, a new, new thing that ch changes. Boy, it just changes so much. Uh, I've got a number of different people in bowls, uh, different clients, and family members, and us. So, uh, so I've been trying this in various ways uh, with different, all different kinds of problems. And it's, it's very interesting, very promising. Wow. I wonder if back when um, we weren't exposed to so many offending like substances, like what our bodies were like, you know, back when there wasn't so much, right? If there was um, less of an inflammatory response. Mm -hmm. Yeah, way less, way less. Yeah. I remember um, I'm 73. And when I was little, I didn't know anybody that had an allergy. I was the only one that I knew that had an allergy. Mm. And it had problems with, you know, a number of different things, certain animals, uh, grasses, other kinds of spring pollen, um, my family used to, they had really good friends, had this huge ranch with all these cattle and they would have um, brandings of the cattle when they're, they're very young, but it has to happen in, in the late summer or fall because you can't get into the winter months and still get out into the field and get the animals collected and all that stuff. So we would go and they'd have a, a lot of people there and big party and big barbecues. And they always had all these odd things going on. They had all these other animals, you know, they had the goats, they had the horses. And, and I, had, I was allergic to all of them. One year they had saved um, a fawn, a little baby deer, and um, they were taking care of it. And it still had uh, spots. They were fading and it was in this corral and, and they fed it, you know, a, a lot of natural kind of things that it would eat, but also uh, hay. And so all the kids were over there and they wanted to pet the fawn and, you know, and play with it and feed it. And so I did too. And uh, <laughs> sure enough, I had the huge reactions. My lips swell, swelled way up as big balloon lips and I had rashes and wheezing and Oh no. <laughs> I was the only person, you know, and it seemed like, um, you know, some of the adults, when they heard about this or they saw these reactions, uh, they never heard of people having an allergy. They didn't, some of them, was like, they acted like they didn't even know what the word was. Like they'd never heard of it. So it's only, um, decades it's only a few decades mm. that it, it seems like there you don't find a person that doesn't have some kind of allergy okay we we need to close out we're coming up to an hour we have a couple of things that at least i want to come back to the stories more stories really beautiful stories beautiful yeah. thanks beautiful. lynn i mean the stories are great, but when you feel into it, it's just enormous. I mean, your dog didn't have to go through the suffering that usually a dog has to go through until they get to the vet. And even then, it could be problematic, or a lot more problematic. Your eyes, Laura, I mean, that's just, wow. And yeah. then Keeper, 
I mean, you had me when you said that, uh, like, after the first day, he was happy. That's like helping an autistic a kid on the autistic spectrum to be happy in a day is like, I don't have words. It's unheard of. Yeah. But then all the other work you have done since and, and the story about how he, is, how he is in the world now, it's like. I want more. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> So many people would be happy to stay there. Why? But see, this is what you've created, Kay. It's fabulous. We have every expectation we can have more. Yeah, Not to be can. satisfied. We can. If you can dream it up, if you could think it, you can you can create it. Yeah. So thank you so much. It's truly beautiful, amazing. Thank you. Beautiful stories. And Deanna has, <laughs> she had a story too about. <laughs> we'll get Deanna back. Yeah. But anyway, my red bowl helped me repel and rehome a nest of rats that were each three to four inches long. The rats moved in under my kitchen window outside during a big flood last month. No exterminator necessary and no more rats as of today. Yay. Wow. Yay. Wow. And yeah, then, so many levels. <laughs> thank you for sharing that. And Odette has a question. What's the difference between rates and writing what you want on a piece of paper? Mm, good question. Well, rates are numbers and they come from the electrical radionics types of equipment. And this started more than a hundred years ago working and uh, researching with these kind of machines, uh, electrically based machines. And they have got dials with numbers on it and everything. And they're dialing in frequencies. Only the numbers uh, on the dial aren't the exact number of the frequency. It's not like one hertz, 10 hertz. It's not, they're, they're dialing in uh, sometimes whole groups of actual frequent frequencies and there's several dials you, you tune each one and so that's why there's um, the number with a dash and another number it's talking about going to a different dial and putting the different numbers on a, a different dial so the, a lot of these rates have been around for a uh, hundred years and many of them many many of them for at least 50 years and different radionics practitioners uh, and inventors have been collecting them and sharing them with all their other practitioners. So this, this collection has just been growing and being passed down. So a lot of what's in our manual for, um, for using as, as rates with these different types of number formulas. Uh, they've, they've been around a long time, but I've also created a, a number, researched a number of different uh, actual number rates. But with the bowl, we have this opportunity to use words as rates. Words as rates. And these these rates have started off a lot of them as words, a single word, a name of something, a, a sentence or several sentences of something to describe an action that they wanted to get the frequency pattern for. And they would uh, tune the machine in uh, to get whatever the frequency numbers were, these rate numbers uh, for this exact action and we so that you can go both ways you can, words are rates rates can be words and uh, you have an awful lot more possibilities and variety when you're using words and we've been experimenting with that 
myself and Helmut and all of you, all this, all the students uh, trying different types of, of statements or sometimes just single words. Uh, sometimes the statements, um, you know, a whole big long paragraph and that's okay too. But we, when we do any using words as rate, we, we need to think about what it is we're creating with that word statement. What are we really asking for? So the words become very important. The structures of the sentence become very important. The accuracy and not having extras, unnecessary words or phrases in there at all because that detracts from um, the energy that you're trying to put together and uh, have the universe send in, in the bowl with a scalar wave in the bowl to your target, to the person you're trying to, or the animal or the garden or, or your water or whatever it is, you can broadcast anything. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of research. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of thinking up new things, thinking out of the box. Whatever your box is, thinking outside the box. And it just keeps getting more spectacular. All the different things the students come up with as well. It, it's fabulous. And it's a lot of beautiful, amazing healing, healing work. Laura needs to run, so we need to close out. All right. Um, you can find more at kataseredor.com. You can find Laura, the Laura's probably, lauraketty.com. Lynn, where can people find you if they want to find you? Uh, at uh, lovemyhealingjourney.com. Cool. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. And thank you, Kay. Mm. Yeah, just amazing. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Laura and Laura. Thank you, guys. It's beautiful. We, got, we have to do more of these. Lots more. Lots more. And more stories. I yeah. love the stories. Love the stories. <laughs> Thank you, Kay. And thanks, everybody, for joining us, joining us live. And Thank we'll see you. you next time. Bye. Thank Love you. you. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.